go. This evening's topics. A little bit about charts and publications, and then a little bit about drawing instruments. So, navigational charts and publications. Information shown in a chart. Chart symbols, the representation of direction and distance. Some of the publications that we use, when I say some, definitely some, because there are very, very many, but I'm gonna highlight the ones that we use the most. Bit of chart correction, and then just the different instruments we use for plotting, dividers, things like that. So, nautical publications. What are charts and publications? They are documents and maps. Note the word maps in inverted commas there because they're not actually maps, they're actually called charts, specific to the marine environment, only for the marine environment. What they are is government issued. So you can see these are all Admiralty. And you can actually see government logos there. They're not reference books or teaching aids published by some marine authority. They are specifically government publications. Okay. So for instance, the RYA publish a lot of very, very, very good reference books and that sort of thing but they're not official marine documents that we use. So charts on marine maps. So whenever you come back to the boat next time, the word charts is the only one you use. So when I'm teaching a course, you're allowed your first week to call it the map. After that, you pay a fine if you call it the map. It's called a chart. All charts are published by a government authority and contain certain basic information for safe passage making of the area detailed in the chart. Okay, so you'll see that they've got some sort of government logo, government authority on them. Okay, so here's a South African chart, one of mine off the boat, so it looks like it's been used because it's been used quite heavily. The chart will have a scale, a depth, and a projection. Okay, so there's your scale, there's depths in meters, and what type of projection? When I say projection, it's, this one is a Mercator projection. So it means how the chart is detailed, taking a round world and flattening it. So there's obviously multiple ways you can do that. You can spread things out, you can cut corners out, all sorts of things if you make a round world flat. So this is the most common one, it's Mercator. Okay. All charts have dates for fairly obvious reasons, but they also have updates to keep them relevant. So this particular chart was the 15th of May, 1981 but there'll be updates that go from that afterwards, okay? So what they do is they publish in a book called Notice to Mariners. All charts will have detail any Notice to Mariners for further reading. So if you look at this whole bunch of information where you should be reading to make sure that your knowledge of what happens on this chart is up to date. And that comes out in Notice to Mariners, which we'll go into in more detail. All charts have a compass rose and dependent on their magnetic variation, some sort of magnetic on the inside. So if we look at this chart, you'll notice that naught or 360 degrees is right at the top. 95% of charts work like that. Magnetic variation is then detailed after that. So these main lines on your chart are pointing at true north. Your latitude and longitude grid, that grid is always pointing at true north. And then your magnetic just shown on a compass rose. Okay. Charts always have an addition number. 
So there's the number. And that was the addition of it. The format of how it's laid out. And I, it, I've called this the GPS format. It's not officially GPS format. It's how the latitude and longitude is read. So WGS 84 is degrees, minutes, and decimal of a minute, which is the most common one. Tidal information, if it's relevant. So if it's a chart of the Baltic, there's no tide there, so it's not relevant. And then the magnetic variation, what year that variation happened, and then how much change it is. So this was seven degrees, 25 minutes west in 2005, but it's changed eight minutes east every year since then. So that can still keep the chart up to date. And then obviously, if you look at the whole thing, there's details of safe passage making, where land is, where the rocks are, where the lights are, all that sort of thing. Note, not all charts are for navigation. Some are printed specifically for training purposes. So I'm using an RYA example here, and thank you very much to the RYA, but I'm specifically using these words, not to be used for navigation. So if you see that on a chart, don't put it on your boat. Okay, symbols. All charts have various symbols on them, detailing all the relevant information that we need for safe passage making. So there's a little fish in a box. There's some sort of boy with a spiky piece. There's a boy with two black balls. You see all these different, there's an anchor. They're all a whole bunch of information. Now I've said here, make sure you have the correct scale. As the scale gets bigger and bigger, more and more of these little symbols disappear because they can't print that on something much bigger or this or that. So you lose information as your scale gets bigger and bigger. And that doesn't matter whether it's paper or electronic charts, they both do the same. So with electronic charts, you zoom in and out of the chart. So most of you should know who've been on the boats time zero. Okay, so if we look at the information just around Table Bay here, as I zoom in, a bit more information, some of these boys have appeared. Out, oh, boys disappear. Zoom in, zoom in a bit more. Oh, a lot more information. So charts work exactly the same way, paper charts and electronic charts. As your scale gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you lose information. Now it just looks like a blue thing. And as you get closer and closer, you gain information. You can see the harbor itself, no information yet. Lots of information. So paper charts and electronic charts work the same way. So there's a very, very famous, unfortunate occasion where somebody didn't zoom in. Vestus wind hit that atoll right in the middle of uh, the Indian Ocean. And they literally sailed right up onto these rocks. Okay, so when we look at a chart, what are we looking at? So this is what you'll see on your chart on the piece of paper, this is kind of a three-dimensional version of it looking side on. So mean high water springs, that is your average high water spring. Chart datum, which is then your sea level on your chart, okay, is the lowest tide you will ever get. So the piece that they have here in the green is the tidal flow in and out. So this particular one, you can see there's a bit of yellow there. 
and they've put a circle around saying it's naught meters. This one is just a piece of green because at high tide it disappears under the water and out again. And then you get contours. So that's saying it's five meters, 10 meters. Okay. That's your coastline above mean high water springs. Then this is your shoreline that the tide will come in and out and flood and cover. That dries. These two both get covered up. So the tide will come in and those will disappear. Then we've got our rocks. There's a drying rock, a star. There's a rock awash, which is a cross with dots around it. And then right at the bottom, a dangerous rock for navigation is just a cross. Okay. So when we look at a chart, we go, okay, there's this, there's a little wreck there. There's another wreck there. There's a wreck above the water there. How do we know what these symbols mean? And just remember what we said last time, not all charts are the same. So we have a publication that shows us what the symbols are. Each authority will publish their own symbols and abbreviations that will detail every single little picture that you see on the chart. They will publish something called symbols and abbreviations. Look something like this inside. So it's what the picture looks like, and then a detail of what it is, what it means. And it's just pages and pages and pages of it with a nice little index for you to be able to find things quickly, okay? Note they are specific to the chart publisher. So if you're looking at Indian charts, Indian Navy charts, you must have an Indian Navy symbols and abbreviations. Australian, Australian Navy, American, and so on. Okay, so which ones are used on all charts? These, the rocks. They're the same on every chart. Okay, so if we use our low water here, that's our chart datum. That's as low as the tide will ever get. A rock that's dangerous underwater is a cross like this. Americans put a little ring around it. British don't. A rock awash at low tide, at lowest astronomical tide, has a little cross and dots. Same little ring around it. And then a rock that uncovers at low tide is a little star. Those are the same on every single chart in the world. Please note, guys, this is at the lowest astronomical tide which means even this rock that uncovers might well be covered most of the time because it only appears at the lowest astronomic tide. This guy might always be underwater because the one day of the year when it's the lowest tide is the only time he's awash. So he might actually be underwater 99% of the year. So you won't see him in the water. So if you're looking for him, you can't see him. These are definitely in your YM exam, by the way. You're expected to know these chaps. A couple of other hazards, very common on most charts. Wrecks. Generally, that's a wreck that's exposed above the water. These guys, that's a wreck that's a hazard to shipping. And that's a wreck that's quite deep. Doesn't affect anybody. Breakers. They're obviously a hazard to problems especially sailing boats and things. Spoiled areas can include obstructions, reefs, little islets, things like that. So these sort of things are the main things you really want to know about your chart if you're only doing any navigation because, well, you don't want to hit anything. Distance on a chart. Now we spoke about distance a little bit last week. This will change according to your scale, but you always use 
your latitude scale, remember, what we spoke about last time. Depending on your scale of your chart, your dividers will have a different distance, but it works exactly the same way. Latitude scale, straight up, that's your distance. Back onto publications, symbols and abbreviations. We know about that one now. The next one, lights and signals. Admiralty list of lights and fog signals. This is specific for the British Isles and the north coast of France. It details every marine light. So every lighthouse, every buoy, all of those things is written in there what it's about. The sound signals that they make, if they make them. And then the radio procedures to get in and out of any harbour. So if you want to know how to get into Portsmouth Harbour, the radio procedures will be in here. It's specific to a region, obviously, because it details every single light in that region. Every country publishes one. So every ship that goes past a coastline can look at the lights and go, I know where I am, I know what it's all about. Then we've got notice to mariners. Again, this is the Admiralty version. Annual summary of notice to mariners part two. There's obviously a part one, there's actually a part three and four as well. It's any updates to the sailing directories, any update on a chart, any radio updates, all these updates that mariners need to know about comes into this book. So that was referring, when we first looked at the charts, there was that section down the bottom that said, refer to notice of mariners. It referred to this book. So that's how you can keep updated with all your charts. Tide tables, well, they make sense. They're obviously dated because tides change every year. You can't use last year's tide table for this year. And they're obviously to a region. Nautical almanacs, okay. Now these aren't officially nautical almanacs. They just a bunch of, so for instance, this reads one here. It's a bunch of information about an area. It should more be called nautical information book because it's not actually an almanac, but they're very, very useful, but they're not official government books. This is published by a company called Reads. They're very useful and it's got a lot of good information, but they're not governmental almanacs. That is a proper nautical almanac and it is used specifically for doing sextant and celestial sites. Site reduction tables, they're also for sextant work. We also carry them. And then obviously we carry the international regulations for the prevention of collision at sea. So we spoke about that two weeks ago, I think. There's loads more. So you can see how many different things are in there. But those are the main ones that we carry at sea because those are the ones we mostly need. Okay, so wherever you register your vessel, they might they may detail which publications you're required to carry. Personally, even if they don't ask me to carry these, I would carry all of them. But some of them say, no, you have to carry, for instance, the Marple documents, which is all about marine pollution. Some of them say you have to carry the Solus book, which is the safety of lives at sea. They're good books, but these are the ones that we really tend to use all the time. Okay, let's chat a little bit about drawing instruments. When we're on a chart, we only ever use a 2B pencil. Please guys, you stick an HB pencil into a nice brand new chart and you're gonna ruin it. They are too hard. 2B pencils are nice, soft, and they work beautifully, and you can erase them and reuse your chart. These propelling pencils, you know, the ones you push and they get a nice, fine little pre-sharpened thing, they punch holes in your charts. They go swimming as far as I'm concerned. Dividers, fantastic things. It allows you to measure distance, allows you to arc things off, very, very, very useful. They are not there to pick your ear, repair your sunglasses, punch holes in your belt, etc. 
You just bend the ends and you ruin them. They are a proper nautical instrument and we use them. Parallel rules. Absolutely wonderful things. Specifically when you've got a chart on a nice big table, you can do very, very accurate navigation with a parallel rule. They don't work particularly well on not stable surfaces. So if you're on a ship and you've got a nice big table or you do planning at home on a nice flat table and it's not moving, fantastic things. When you're on a small yacht trying to do things and it's all bouncing around, we use these guys, Portland blotters. Much, much easier to use when a boat is moving. Very quick, very accurate. They call Portland plotters. Many, many multiple uses. Then we've got these little things called correction table templates. So when you get your notice to mariners and you need to put something onto the chart, this is the template that you use. You'll get all sorts of other calculation aids. There's hundreds of them. This is something that I picked up in sailing today and I've managed to photograph it upside down. So well done me. But it's a little time distance calculator. Now you can do that in your head, but this is a nice little, pull it out, does the job for you. Chart correction. So we had a look at our template earlier. It's all published in our notice to mariners. You do it in a fine tip purple ink. So it stands out on your chart. You can see where you've done your update. It's the only time you use ink on your chart. The only time ever. Okay. And it's only ever done with one of these templates. You don't try and draw it by freehand because they design, each thing is actually designed on that template to be able to do it properly. And you obviously do it as accurately as possible. It's no point in doing a correction if it's incorrect. So if you see handwritten notes and symbols on a chart in purple ink, be aware they're corrections. There might be a slight inaccuracy to them. So give yourself a little bit of leeway on them if you have, if you can. Okay, so a little bit about publications and the things we actually use. As I said, just scratching the surface, just a game, but and there's lots and lots and lots of other publications. We'll mention some of them during the course of these presentations, but those are the main ones we carry and the ones that we actually use regularly on board. One of the things you don't need to know is every symbol and abbreviation. You actually just need to know where to reference them. So when you do a yacht master exam or you do a skipper's ticket, doesn't matter where in the world, you're not expected to learn every symbol and every abbreviation. You just expected to learn hazards like those rocks we went through. But you do need to know where to reference them. Same thing again, you don't need to know every light and light signal, but you do know how to you do need to know how to reference them. So if you see a lighthouse, you need to be able to look at it and go, does that compare to what's on my chart? How do I reference it? List of lights and signals. Okay, don't really bother with apps for this sort of thing because there are so many different chart producers, so many different governments. So I don't keep any of them. I just use the ones that I've got on board. Most publications these days are available electronically. So you can literally just put them on your laptop and take them with you. I use a port and plotter, dividers more than any other navigational tool. I use my... Um, parallel rule when I'm sitting at home doing some nice planning and I'm sitting on a nice big flat dining room table. But at sea, I just use my port and plotter all the time with my dividers. It's the easiest one I've used. So if you're thinking about doing some navigation and, and carrying on with this, that's the guy you want to be looking at. Okay, next week, a bit of chart work. We'll do a bit of dead reckoning. Estimated position, including an awareness of leeway. We won't go heavily into leeway. We'll talk about the techniques of visual fixing, whether we're doing three-point fixes or, or uh, running fixes. We'll talk about satellite-derived positions, our GPS and GNS systems, use of waypoints, and fixing a position. And lastly, we'll look at course to steers, just briefly.